Good morning, Zion's Calls, family, friends, and community. This Sunday morning is a new experience for me as I'm coming to you by way of social media and YouTube this morning uh, as we are still in the midst of this coronavirus, uh, the pandemic that is going on in our world. So we have chosen to come to you uh, through the airways and, and various other places there. And so we're very, very excited to be able to stand before you and share the Word of God unto you. But there's some things as we begin today uh, that we want to share based upon uh, what we've experienced over the last week and various things. The first thing that I want to say is that uh, here at Zion's Calls this morning, I, I'm missing the kids. I'm missing uh, the students. A lot of students will come up to me and shake hands with me and give me a hug on Sunday morning. And I'm definitely missing those students, missing those kids today. And those kids, those students are upon my heart as I think of the changes that they are going through and having to adjust and do their schoolwork at home and, and the responsibility of that and the accountability and getting all those things. And so my heart goes out to the kids, goes out to the students uh, here in the county and, and other counties as we have students from different school systems that attend here at Zion's Cause. But I want to let you know as pastor, Brother Charles is, is praying for you and uh, you're upon our heart and on our mind uh, as you're dealing with these adjustments, whether you're in preschool, kindergarten, elementary, middle school, high school, we are praying for you and also, yes, seniors, we are saying a special prayer for you. Now on this day, we were supposed to begin with our revival and we have postponed that revival because of, of the outbreak and things, but we have, we have rescheduled that and we will be having that on May the 31st. And so that's kind of scheduled a little, little ways out. Uh, Evangelist John Reed said he would love to do that for us and excited about that as well. And, and you know, uh, here's one thing uh, that, that I can already see by postponing it. It gives us more time uh, to do some planning. Uh, there were some things that, that I wanted to do, but I had run out of time to get those accomplished. And now I have a large window to get those things accomplished. And really, I can see the hand of God uh, in this and having this in May. And so uh, we're looking forward to that. And we just kind of want to share that with you. As we think of today's message, I want to bring a, a message to you today that, that I'm quite familiar with, one that I have shared uh, to this congregation, but one that needs to be heard as we think of the God of this world. You know, as I'm out ministering and, and doing my thing as pastor of Zion's Calls Baptist Church, I run in, I you know, get the chance of being with a lot of people and various things and, and you know, talking to them. And one thing that comes up over and over in conversation, does God care? about me? Does God care about my life? And today we want to share with you some wonderful truths found in the Word of God in regards on how much God cares. Now whenever we think of, of doing that, we're going to go to the Old Testament uh, scriptures there. We're going to go to the book of Exodus chapter 3 to a very familiar passage of scripture of that of Moses and the burning bush. And so we're going to begin today reading that passage of scripture there of Moses and the burning bush. And so uh, we have this prepared for you so you'll be able to read from your screen as well. Well, we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 3, beginning with verses 1 through 12. In verse number 1, it says, Now Moses was pastoring the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him on a blazing fire in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God 
of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God at this mountain. Let us pray. Dear Father, we bow before you. And Father, we come at a very, very important times in our lives. You know, over the past number of days, our lives have tremendously changed. And Father, we're looking for direction. We're looking for comfort. We're looking for things to calm our fears, Lord. So we come to you this morning. And Father, we pray right now for everyone that is listening to this. Lord, may they know that you are here, that you're present, that you're with us, and that you're going to provide and you're going to take care of us. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we can go to it and study it and see how it applies to our life on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen, amen. You know, whenever we think of the life of Moses, you know, Moses lived to be 120 years of age, Uh, but it is in 40-year increments, the life of Moses. For the first 40 years of his life, he was there in the palace of Egypt. He was there in Pharaoh's palace and grew up as, no doubt, as a young prince of Egypt. Well, we know one day when Moses was out and about in the land of Egypt that he saw an Egyptian officer and he was abusing a Hebrew slave. And we know that that Moses killed that Egyptian officer and, and buried him there in the sand. After that incident, Moses had to flee for his life. Pharaoh put out a warrant for him. And so he fled. At age 40, he goes to the wilderness. He goes where no one knows where he is at and spends the next 40 years of his life in the desert, in the wilderness. And then at age 80, we find our text of Scripture where Moses receives the call of God in his life. And God told him that he would use him to be the deliverer of the leader of God's people out of Egypt. We call this the burning bush experience for that of Moses. And for the last 40 years of his life, Moses dedicated his life of serving God and leading the children of Israel. When we think of those first 40 years, we think of those first 40 years when he was in the palace of Pharaoh, he was somebody. He was somebody. Then whenever he went to the backside of the desert, For the next 40 years, he was a nobody. But then we find in the last 40 years of his life, life for him, uh, the greatest chapter of his life began when he was 80 years old, which tells me that God uses us at any age. He can use the young. He can use the adult. He can use a senior adult to perform his wonders in this world. That's just the way that God does. And then we find anybody those last 40 years. Anybody. God can use anybody today. And God may be using you today as we think of this frantic time that we're in, of how that we need to have a certain word, we need to have an encouraging word. God can use you to share those things. I share with you this passage of Scripture found in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. This is Old Testament, not the New Testament, 
But you're going to see what God does in the New Testament. He does in the Old Testament as well in sharing His message. The first thing that we want to point out to you today is our first point for today is God sees. God sees. Notice this in this verse of Scripture here, verse number 7 again. We're going to read from this passage of Scripture. It says here, The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. God's people had been in Egypt for a very, very long time. And because of that long time, they had been taken into slavery. And they were considered the slaves of the Egyptians. And the, and the Egyptians used them as a workforce. The, the Egyptians used them as a labor force to build the great kingdom, the country of Egypt. And so they're there. We think of the plight of the children of Israel at this time is very, very sad. It almost looks hopeless in their life. Day in and day down. As the sun goes down and as the sun comes up, it does not change in the life of God's people at this particular time. And they are afflicted. Can you imagine the Hebrew father, whenever he would go out and he would work very, very hard, work a long day for the Egyptians, come home tired and exhausted, only to collapse and see another dreary day facing him the next morning. Think of the Egyptian mother who was trying to raise a family during this time on limited means. You know, they didn't have a Walmart back then. They didn't have a Kroger back then. They didn't have a Dollar General. They had to do with what they had during those days. And it was not very, very much at all. All oh, they were afflicted in so many areas of their life. And it seemed like there was no hope for them. God begins to speak to Moses. And God begins to share certain things. As we share that, some may ask the question, does God care about me and my life? Well, let's look at Exodus chapter 3 and see what God has to say on how that, that God cares. Well, as we think of here, God sees God sees here, folks, and, and, and God sees you today. God sees all that, that is going on in our lives right now. I mean, he, is, he, he sees the restaurants that are closing. He sees the barbershops that are closing, the, the daycares and, and some of the medical offices that are closing, also the retail stores. I even went to, uh, to a store today, and, and the lady in the next door over said, We're closed today. We're seeing a lot of things. We are, but not only us. But God is seeing as well. He's seeing as well. Whenever we think of the context of, of what we have in this passage of Scripture, God saw their desperate situation. God saw their difficult situation. God saw, God saw their stressful times, just as He sees our stressful times. He sees our difficult times that we are going through right now. Many of you have questions today about what's going to happen. What's going to go on in my life? And I share with you words of comfort today that God sees you right now. He knows where you are. He knows where you are right now. And God cares. He sees our situation. He sees our life. He sees. But not only does He see, but secondly, we find that God hears. God hears. That's not only God sees, but also God hears. Notice in this passage of Scripture here what it says here in verse number 7. We see, we see these words here again. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry. God's people was crying out. Can you imagine that weary dad? As he cried out to God, God, how am I going to take care of my family? God, will you take care of me? Can you, think, can, can you think of those mothers back then? 
Can you think of the children back then as they looked at their life and saying, is this going to be my life? The life of my parents? They begin to cry. Along the way, they had been taught to pray. They had been taught to cry out unto the Lord. And all those prayers from the Israelites, they went up before the Lord. And the first thing that God tells Moses, Moses, I see them. And Moses, I hear their cry. They cried out unto the Lord to be delivered. They cried out to the Lord for freedom in their life. They were in a bad place and they needed God. I love this passage of Scripture. Why do I love this passage of Scripture today? Today I, I was out on uh, Facebook and I said, please list your favorite Scripture so that we may see it, so that we may find other verses in the Bible that can bring peace and assurance into us and encouragement to us during these times. Oh, to me, this is a wonderful verse of Scripture because it lets me know that God sees me. It also lets me know that God hears me. We don't have to wonder if God hears. God does hear. He does hear. He hears every prayer. He hears the prayers that maybe maybe even a, a prayer that you're offering right now. Maybe something that's going on in your life. Maybe a situation. Maybe, maybe something that has just happened today. He hears that prayer. He is ready to hear that prayer. You know, I've been in some place of businesses and going through the drive-in windows of those businesses. Some of those businesses have had long lines. Some of them I've gone in and left and to come back at a later time. This is something wonderful and powerful about God that He can take care of every one of our prayer request all at once. That is the power of God. He can hear all of our prayers at once. How wonderful. How great is that? So we have a God. We have a, we have a God in, in this Bible that, that sees us. We have a God in, in, in this life that, that hears us. But it just doesn't end there. All that, that, would, that would be plenty. Just to know that God is seeing me, just to know that, that God is hearing me, but then the word of the Lord does not stop there. But God's word continues. And we're going to see something else in this passage of Scripture. Thirdly, thirdly, as we look at our point for today, we are going to see not only does God see us, not only that God hears us, but God knows. God knows. This is all found in this one verse of Scripture going to back, back to verse number 7 here. He says, I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. I am aware. I am aware. God is saying here, I love what one translation says. It says, I know their sorrows. Moses, I know their sorrows. I know their difficulty." Moses, I know their desperation. Moses, I know their difficult time. I know all these things. I am aware. I know. God does not have to wait for a news release. God doesn't have a cell phone. He doesn't have to check the internet. He knows everything that is going on in your life right now. Right now. And he cares. He cares very much. There is nothing that is hidden from the creator of this universe. God knows all about humanity here. Of the coronavirus, God is fully aware. God is fully aware. God knows of everyone's situation today. Okay? He knows. And he cares. 
He cares for you and me. My, what a power-packed verse. God seeing, God hearing, God knowing. Hear this one I love about Jesus Christ. The Bible says that, that Jesus Christ left the glory of heaven and He came to earth. I love what John 1, John chapter 1 says. It talks about Jesus Christ. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was divine. Then on, as you read down in that chapter, get on down to about verse 14, and it says there, and the Word became flesh. Became flesh. Jesus left heaven, came to this earth, born as a baby, in a manger there in Bethlehem. Why did He do that? Because that was the only way. <laughs> that was the only way that He could come to this earth. But, but, the, but then also, he came that he might know. Jesus being fully God, being fully man, came to this world. And we are so thankful that he did. So God knows. God is fully aware. Then we see something else in this passage of Scripture. As we look at our next point, we find that God delivers God delivers. As we look at this particular, we're going to move out of verse 7 into verse 8. It says, listen to what God says. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians. I love the first part of that verse. I have come down to deliver. We have a deliverer. We have a deliverer today. We have hope today. <laughs> we have love today. And it is all found in Jesus Christ. God came to Moses. And God, what God is saying here in this verse, I really care about the children of Israel. I left heaven to be here today, Moses. I'm speaking to you through this burning bush because I care. Moses, I'm speaking to you today because I love the children of Israel. And I've heard their cry. I've heard their prayer. And I want to deliver them. And I have come down to deliver them. God was going to deliver Israel from their bondage. He was going to set them free because He cared for them. I stand before you today and let you know that God cares for the world today. God cares for every continent in this world. God cares about you so much that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. All we think of this beautiful picture, God, our Deliverer, I stand before you today and share with you that Jesus Christ is our deliverer. He is the one that died for us. He's the one that paid for our sins. All, all the wrong, all the bad stuff we do in our life. Jesus Christ died for those things and paid for the debt of those things to deliver us. God's people needed deliverance in the book of Exodus. Humanity needs deliverance today. And that is through Jesus Christ. You see, the cross of Jesus Christ is God's ultimate expression of His care. It's His ultimate expression of His love. What a message to share. God cares. God cares. You know, when I think of Jesus Christ being our deliverer, and, and I pray that everyone here today knows Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. If you don't, I pray that you would turn to Him because you need Him right now. You need Him today because He is your deliverer. Reach out to Him and accept Him 
as the Lord and Savior of your life. Simple way to do that as we think of, of that is number one, you've got to recognize that you need Him. You know, you've you got to recognize that you need God in your life. That there is an emptiness that needs to be filled. That you need God and you have to believe in Him. Put your faith and your trust in Him. And then give your life to Him. Say, here I am. I acknowledge what you did on Calvary. <laughs> I acknowledge that, that I need you. God, I need you in my life. I want to give my life to you. And He will do that for you today. He will do that because what? He is our deliverer. He is our deliverer. But then not only is he, is he our deliverer, we see something else that is found in this passage of Scripture as we move on to our next point here for today. God sins. God sins. In God sins here, we look at verse number 10, and it says there, this is God speaking to Moses. He says, therefore come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Oh, as we think of here, God sending. God sending, God sending Moses. God sending an 80-year-old man to deliver thousands of people out of bondage. God using somebody that was in the backside of nowhere. Nobody knew where he was. But God did. But God did. And God chose him. God chose him. Moses, I want you to do this. I want you to go and get my people. I'm going to send you. Oh, today. Today, as we think of God sending us. Sending you, sending me as believers in Jesus Christ. God commands us to go and share His good news. God commands us to go and share that God cares unto this world, this world. God can use you to reach someone in this pandemic that we are experiencing right now. God can use you because we believe that God still sins today. You know, we, when we think of God sending, we think of God sending missionaries all over the world. And we definitely need to be praying for those missionaries. We definitely need to be praying for our international mission board and Dr. Paul Chipwood and our North American Mission Board, Dr. Kevin Ezell, praying for our missionaries as, as they are serving on all continents. But God sends missionaries, but also God sends us here at home, here at home, to do the same thing, to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. He sends you, and He sends me. You say, well, Brother Charles, that overwhelmed me, overwhelmed me a little bit. That's a little bit hard. That, that is a little bit difficult for, for me to understand. Well, God knew that. <laughs> Moses was overwhelmed. <laughs> Moses said, I can't do the job. There, there's, there's no way that, that, that I can do this, God. You know, I've, I've got my own, own failure. I've got my own faults. I've got my own failures. I've got my own things here that I'm dealing with in my life. I am not a good candidate for this job. God said, I know that. I know that. But I'm still sending you. But not only does God give a command, but the last thing that we want to look for today, He gives a promise. He gives a promise. And today we want to talk about God promises. God promises. Here in verse number 12, he says there, And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this will be a sign to you, that is I who have sent you. When you have brought up the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Notice that promise there at the beginning of the verse. 
as he says there, he says, certainly I will be with you. Moses says, I'm not a good candidate. Pick someone else. Use someone else. God says, Moses, you're the one. But Moses, you don't have to worry. Because I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Certainly, I will be with you. What about us? We hear the words of God when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We hear those words, fear not, in our life. We hear those words in this passage of Scripture, I will be with you. And for those that are listening today, the Lord is with us. He's present. He is here right now, and He will get you through. He will get me through. All right? We have a lot of unknowns out there. I don't have a, the answers to all of my questions right now, but there is one thing for certain. I love that wor word certain. God's here. God's here. He's here in your life today. And He'll be with us every day as we go through this pandemic. I love what the Word of God said. One said, can I ascend to the top of the mountain? And that person says, behold God, you're there. It says, if I descend to the depths of the sea, behold you are there. Saying God is everywhere, but not only God is everywhere, but God promises to be with you and me. And so we share today this great message. Not that I've preached it. <laughs> the message is in the Word that God cares. And I share this message with you today. That we are never ever without the care of God. But in the final moments today, may I say that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to look in a Bible. Look into John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't have to go through this pandemic alone because there's a God in this world that loves you and cares for you very, very much. And we share that message to the ones that need to hear that today. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you. We close out this message today. We thank you for modern communication that while we are not able to do this in a setting filled with an audience, but through the power of technology that you have given to us that we are able to accomplish this. And we thank you, Lord, that we can share the truth of your word And we share you care. And so, Father, we pray again for everyone in this time that we're in. But we are not alone. You are with us based upon your promise. Thank you, Lord, so much for that. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. God bless.